They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. In motion left, that's Cooper. On second down, here's Carr. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. LaShawn Sims with the IMT. That was a really nice interception. I think it illustrates the differences between playing man and playing zone. When you're in man, all you're focused on is the receiver in front of you. But when you're in zone, you're allowed to read the quarterback's eyes and go to the ball. That's exactly what happened on that play. And a great spot to start this drive from here. They'll try and get the run game going. This is Henry. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. He had a great read there from his free safety position. And, Charles, you know with those guys, it's all about their eyes. They have to be laser focused. Yeah, I had to fake my way through it when I was playing. But now I can see exactly what they're doing. And on that play, he obviously had no presence to feel like he's being pushed for a pass. And, with and it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Jonu Smith, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Titans are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And he'll put it through, and that evens us up at 10 apiece. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. And now Oakland ready to take the field. They start the drive at Lynch, and he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Here's Carr. They still can't get it. Looking for Cooper, and it's intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byers. Look at the spin. Balance. I think that interception happened for two reasons. Quarterback gets outside the pocket and panics a little bit. And receiver doesn't make sure he's absolutely in an open spot. So there's a guy lurking, took the ball from him. Yeah, so don't wave your arms, right, as a receiver if you're not wide open. Got to know that you're open. Otherwise, just don't do it. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Derrick Henry. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. Okay, let's face it. Most of the offensive linemen in today's NFL, they're going to weigh over 300 pounds. That doesn't mean they don't have agility. And the way that they can get out in front of a runner and create a space, sometimes it looks like they're going in one direction, and the runner uses his eyes to take him in another direction because it's been blocked so well. Love those misdirection or counter plays, and this one worked really well for a nice piece of yardage. And he is not going to get in as the big bodies stop him at the one. Brandon, if I wanted to run the football this close to the goal line, I think I'd just turn around and hand it to my tailback. Too many things could go wrong in this situation. I think they're fortunate just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and goal. Can the offense punch it in here from the one? No gain on the play. And what to do now on fourth and goal? That was a statement stop right there. Now it forces the opposing head coach to answer this question. What do you do on fourth down? And Suckup will put this one right through. And they will take the lead at 13 to 10. So he splits the uprights there, and I would imagine it's nice as a kicker. Right when it leaves your foot, you know it's good. Yeah, it's kind of like a golfer that picks up his tee after a nice drive without even watching it land. Solid analogy. I like it. And now Oakland ready to take the field. 
Now, they've sort of lost their way, partner. How do they recalibrate and get this proverbial train back on track? Well, this is where leadership really comes into play. How's the head coach handling it? The offensive coordinator? Sometimes they just make a joke. All right, guys. Have your fun. All right. Throw it out the window. Yeah, let's get back on track here. And sometimes that'll work just fine. I guess it's time now to lean on that leadership. Amari Cooper, the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Oh, he caught it. Just couldn't get the feet down. Couldn't get that toe tap sequence, right? I was ready to call him tippy toes if that one was completed. Car again here on second and ten. He's going to air one out. And he's unable to grab it. Thought he might have had position, couldn't hold on, third down. I know he wants to get his team back in the game, but a 50-50 ball right there that maybe was a little questionable. Yeah, he's pretty lucky to get that one back. I think that sometimes his quarterbacks play with a lot of confidence that borders on arrogance, and that can put your team in some Dutch. Yeah, especially maybe you want to look at some safer routes after the interception he had that ended their last drive. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw, unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. 13 yards is the pickup for Tennessee and a first down. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They'll run it again with Henry, and he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run it until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, Fool him a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool him on that play. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. Henry will get it. He's been busy today. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. That's two really good stops in a row. Back-to-back -back tackles for losses. I mean, let's face it. They are locked in to what they're doing offensively. And now they've earned the right to rush the passer on third down, haven't they? Yeah, and offensively they're going to have to do something else because the run game, at least on this drive, isn't working. Eluding the pressure right. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be gotten rid of, otherwise he was going to get sacked. Here's Brett Kern now, as he's on to punt for the first time this afternoon. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle. They're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, he got what he could there, just trying to move forward and, and gain a little bit of yardage and create some space. You know the pressure is going to be tough defensively. Car going to throw. And complete right side to Cook. And he is going to be knocked flat on his back. Oh, big hit right at the 10-yard line.
The Raiders on third down, just one for three thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Play clock winding down. Throwing now is Carr, and he finds Cook. And he is going to have the first down as he gets this up to his own 11. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. So the offense has it first and 10. They go play action here on first down. Forced out to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Logan Ryan. Not the best of plays there as a quarterback. You're right-handed, rolling left, trying to throw it that far downfield. I remember a coach of mine saying, son, that's the equivalent of trying to get the car keys out of your pocket with your opposite hand while you're trying to run. You just can't do it. Following the interception here, Mariota dancing to his left. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I like his thought process and his ability to move and get downfield, but what I didn't like was the final decision, to go out of bounds. They want to keep the clock moving. Instead, they give the defense an extra timeout. Mariota gives to Henry. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he'll take this one down to the 36. He needed three. He got two. Now that'll set up an interesting situation here on fourth and a yard. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, this from 53. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that extends their advantage to six. It's 16 to 10. So they get the three here, but you wonder whether that's going to be enough. Yeah, I mean, you've now made it so they need a touchdown rather than a field goal to catch them. But you're right. If they'd gotten six out of that drive, this would be a much different game. So out come the Raiders. on the last drive. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And they're able to get this one across the 35. That one good for 13 and a Raider first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. So the D-line's going to spread out. Back to the air on second down. It's Carr. He's going to fire one deep over them. It's caught inside the 25. A big play that time for the Raiders. 42 yards. Now they've been struggling in the passing game. Do you like the aggressiveness there? I mean, it worked on that play, but do you like it? I do because a lot of the time you're struggling because your passing lanes are clogged. That usually happens when you're throwing the ball underneath. People start to press up on you. Push them deep. Find some space and open things up again. Being aggressive there, I think, will pay off for them. They'll run it now out of the gun. Open space inside the 10. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. 11 more on that one and another first down. 
But think of it like you would a typical boxing match. The person is on his heels and absorbing blows is having a tough time. And that's what's happening to the defense right now because the offense is on his toes and punching. And there's another first down run right there. Amari Cooper, his intended receiver, and that'll bring up second down. So this offense really needs to make something happen here late in the fourth with the football. Carl will try it again on second down. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Five yards that time on the completion, and now it's third and goal. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do? You got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end. Take some easier completions. Yeah, interception last drive. There he hits the reliable target. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. From the gun, it's Carr. Oh, he almost intercepted it. They're just forcing it into too many tough spots. That was almost a fourth pick of the game. And now fourth down. Likely the play of the game here, trailing in the final quarter and going for it on fourth and goal. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Now Carr, got to have this one. And he's got his tight end, Cook, in the end zone. Touchdown, Raiders. Jared Cook, a five-yard touchdown. And the Raiders are an extra point away from taking the lead. And they have taken the lead here in this fourth quarter. Out to kick is Janikowski. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. Mm -hmm. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. They find some open field here. Henry all alone. Touchdown, Titans. Derrick Henry, 75 yards. And the Titans have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. Wow. I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. A yeah, score that puts them in front here late, but now you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get over-eager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long way. Now here's Suck about to kick it away. And now Oakland ready to take the field. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. Cooper was the intended target, and now it's second down. He 
He's back to throw. Over the middle, he gets it to Patterson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. A really good pickup of 28 yards. It's Patterson, and he gets this inside the 35-yard line. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down offense looking to avoid a third and long it's second and ten back to throw to the right side he's got cooper it's complete eight yards on the completion but now they face third down the raiders going to use one of their timeouts as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The Raiders on third down, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. Back to throw, Carr. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Cook. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And it's first and goal now, but still 10 yards to go. throw and this is caught it's Cooper to go in the football game Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now Carr. And that will be incomplete with a clock showing 18 seconds now to go. He was trying to get it to Michael Crabtree there. And it's third and five. To throw his car. And this ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. Yes, sir. That touchdown. Now have the momentum. Go ahead and get it done. And now a critical extra point attempt here. And we may very well be headed to overtime. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That'll be taken in the end zone. Fence now, they get set to head back out here. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. A tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk-reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Walker, the tight end in motion. 
And they'll send the tight end in motion here. They'll send a receiver in motion left. They begin with Henry. Oh, he's got a little daylight. He finds an opening past the 40. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. So now with six seconds remaining, we get a timeout on the field. And...